Hey guys, welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. But before I get into it though, I'd like to remind you guys to like the video and subscribe and share it. And I'd like to remind you guys to be safe from wherever you're watching and enjoy. When last we left off, we had gone birthday shopping for Hanako. And we met up with Lily his big sister and Shizune's little cousin and now we're at Hanako's birthday party we read some uh, one of Lily books well tried to anyways but let's do it quite the opposite I I find your curiosity endearing. I'm ordinarily pleased by. I'm inordinarily pleased by the praise, though I can feel my cheeks heating up a little. Thanks, but I don't know how else I could act. To be honest, I wasn't sure altogether how you saw us since you're a new transfer student from another school. If you'd pitied us, I would have been quite offended. There's a certain edge to Lily's voice. On that, I'm, I'd am i quite possibly place as pride. Glancing over to Hanako, she seems to be more subdued than usual, looking towards Lily rather than me. I, I wouldn't worry about that. Considering the position I found myself in, I'm perhaps the last person that should be dispensing pity on others. My parents first interaction with me after my heart attack, I wouldn't want anyone else to see that kind of face. I catch myself going from going any further, but not soon enough. Both the girls seem to be put off, Lily especially. I'm... Sorry, I shouldn't have gone that far. An awkward silence reigns up for a few beats. Thankfully, ended as Lily has head perks up. In gesture, I've come to easily recognize. Here's something? The door. Everyone looks toward it. Thrusting in Lily's senses. True enough, the door handle shudders and turns, a flash of yellow and black slipping through. A Akira Sato is in the house! Happy birthday, Hanako! Ah, thank you! Akira takes a seat at the table as she plops her tall bag beside her. She has her trademark boisterous air about her, making no small deal of her entrance. Hanako clutches her gown to steady herself, but doesn't appear to do shake it after she settles down. I guess she must have met Akira before. Not a huge surprise given how close Akira and Lily are. Akira doesn't seem to be the least bit put off by Hanako's scarring, despite its prominence. But she also doesn't pull any punches in how she acts despite Hanako's shy nature. I thought you said you had to work, Akira. Did you manage to get off for a while? Eh, kinda. I feel bad about ditching the guys that are doing overtime, so I gotta get back soon. But I feel b bad about not coming to your cute little Hanako's birthday, too. So for now, I'm here. She grins wildly at Hanako, who f f flowers in a full blush as she pins her eyes towards her at her lap. Her mouth seems to widen and retract over and over as if she was trying to suppress a smile out of embarrassment. It's a little strange how her reaction seems to be more immediate and forceful than when she's embarrassed by the way she looks. All she manages to give in return is a tiny nod, failing to hide her appreciation to any great extent. Not that many people give her a positive attention, I suppose that makes me in respect how well Akira can handle her, making her so happy compared to what, uh, what little I could do. Now then, before I go, she reaches into the bag beside her and grandly displays its contents. 
Out come two large glass bottles, both l with long French names on the labels. Hanako's expression is an odd mix of surprise and curiosity, and I suspect mine's no different. Lily not seeing the proceedings, it's obvious what's going on. Akira, this isn't... What is it? Wine. One red, one white. Akira, that's... Relax, relax. It's not like Shizune is here to scold you. At this point, there's a, n Lily has a point that's not exactly allowed on campus. Or anywhere, really. We're still short of legal drinking age, remember? Rich words coming from somebody practically drooling as he examines a bottle. She got me there. I I'm generally interested in trying some, even just a little. While Hanako may not be handling one herself, her looks tell me she's far from opposed to the notion as well. Lily rubs her forehead, giving up in the fight so that she knows that Kira would win due to simply not caring enough about those funny rules and regulations. Just don't breathe a word of this to anyone at school, please. I beg of you. I'm not stupid. Don't worry. That said, I've got to get back to work pretty soon. So soon? But you've only just arrived. Sorry, Lily. Good to see you two again, though. And you, Hiso. See you later, then. Um, goodbye, Kira. She leaves herself up with a grunt and waltzes out of the room, leaving us alone with the two items on the table. Interesting. Lily gives a nervous giggle at her sister's antics, and Hanako takes a wine bottle. So, what do you think, Lily? She rests her elbow on the table and pinches the bridge of her nose, thinking things through. She doesn't seem to be able to keep up with her sister. Well, it's already here. We may as well have some. No sooner does she say it that I take a quick glance around the room for glasses. A small groan above me reminds me that Lily retired to rest on her bed for a bit a few minutes ago. Almost completely drained of energy, I managed to stand up and drag myself to the side of the bed, sitting down and learning, leaning my back against it. Good God. You... Lily's groan sounds lifeless. Too much to drink? My head hurts. Yeah, too much to drink. I rest my head back and idly stare at the ceiling. What an unmitigated disaster. Like proper idiots, we all drink the night away with one glass after another. Hanako simply fell asleep, fell to the side asleep, and sh it's a miracle I don't feel as old as Lily. He saw, sorry, I'm sorry about today. I didn't think that this would happen. It's fine, Lily. To tell the truth, I had a lot of fun today. Really? Mm, I think Hanako did too. No, she certainly did. There's a short silence before another groan resounds from from the uh, supine? Lily, you okay? As you said, I just drank too much. What's the time? The time? Uh, it's... I quickly look at my wristwatch. Its numerals are barely legible in the gloom. About midnight? A curfew's in effect then. Yeah, I guessed as much. We'll have to sleep here for tonight. As soon as I say it, I hear the sheets moving as the leaves starts to sit up. Hanako. Ah, no, go back to sleep. Don't try to get up. He so, I have to. You're in worse shape than me by any stretch. Get some rest. But what about... I'll grab some spare blankets and put them over. Don't worry. As I give a deep yawn and stand up to retrieve them, I hear her lie back down with a soft thud. Thank you, he said. No problem. It's the least I can do. You look outright wasted. I'm not wasted. Just a little bit tired. 
She starts pouting, a slight slur beginning to distort her words as the alcohol takes hold of her again. I grab a couple of blankets rolled up at the end of her bed. Quietly walking over to Hanako, I carefully lay the blankets over her peacefully sleeping figure, making sure not to wake her up. The thick smell of alcohol coming off her breath makes me doubt she'd wake up no matter what I did, though. I stand and take one last measure of the room. Two girls, both very drunk, and one guy sleeping overnight with them in the female student storm. What a scandal that'd be if it broke out. As I move to sit back down at the side of the bed, I steal one last glance at Lily. Her s sprawling, disheveled figure lies in resting peacefully, slightly turned to the side. I crouch down to get a better look. Her skin blends in with the white pillow of the, of the bed, a look of a slumber-born peacefulness on her face. Usually she seems so confident and forward, always there caring for Hanako now, though she seems painfully delicate. Thinking back to Hanako's presence, I thought it'd be a nice occasion for her, but, I, but I'd hardly expected it to be so moving. One birthday after another, year after year, just she and Lily all alone. I guess it wasn't just the presence she liked. Resigning myself to an uncomfortable sleep, I sit down at the side of the bed once again and rest my tired arms beside me. Beside me. Hey, he's so. Lily's voice is so quiet I can barely hear it. She seems to be on the verge of sleep. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you? For what? For being here. That's okay. As I hear a deep breath from it, it it's obvious Lily's gone to sleep. After closing my eyes, it doesn't take long for slumber to take me as well. Hey, so? Hey, so are you? A soft, barely audible voice lingering there slowly wakes me. I wish I could be woken like this more often. With the mumble, I slowly open my. Whoa! Ah! Taken back by a surprise of face hovering curiously three millimeters from mine, I make our heads collide with a harsh thud. The impact of our foreheads causes both of us to fall backwards and yelp in pain. Lily sounding more like a squeak toy than a person. Ow, 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 ow. I slowly rub my forehead with one hand, supporting myself with the other. Lily lies a few feet ahead, doing just the same, her face obviously pained. Ah, sorry, your face was kinda close, and I acted on reflex. Are you okay? My head. It seems though she's not actually okay. Come to think of it, I doubt the impact alone is what's causing her head so much pain. Hangover? You drank a fair bit last night. She silently nods in confirmation as I never as I lever myself up. I offer her a hand to help her back on her feet. Glancing behind her, I find Hanako still fast asleep. It's not fair. I only drank as much as you did. That's very different from what I remember. And anyway, girls have lower tolerance than men. That, that doesn't help. <laughs> fine. I'll get, fine, I'll get you a glass of water. Just be careful not to trip over Hanako. I rub the sleep out of my eyes, or at least some of it, as I walk to the counter, turn, attending to someone with a hangover isn't the way I'd like to spend the morning. It only takes a few seconds for the glass to fill with, with the quick... The clear water reflecting the silver of light makes it through the thin curtains. It, it looks like Lily's taking a seat on the side of the bed. I walk over to her while taking care to step over the peacefully sleeping Hanako and place the glass into her outstretched hands. Thank you. No problem. I take a seat next to her, the soft bed having a surprising amount of give. She's she drinks slowly and methodically. A long silence passes with only Hanako's soft breathing to be heard. With some measure of guilt, 
I look, I, I look at Luke's face and attempt to read her expression. Her brow is furrowed. She looks to be lost in thought. For a moment, I hesitate, but eventually place a hand on her shoulder and attempt to reassure her. I didn't expect her to flinch rather noticeably at that, though. I'm, ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> Lily quickly shakes her head in a manner somewhat more violent than usual for her. She takes a long breath to steady herself before letting her head sink. I must look terrible right now. I moved to protest but quickly realized that would be fuel, futile to do so. That said, I want her to her open up more. If you want to talk about anything, I'm here. L Lily gives a self-deprecating snort as if to mock her own emotions. There's just a lot happening right now. Sorry for being so strange recently, especially back when we were in town. Even now I'm a bit confused about everything. Believe me, I know how that feels. She smiles wistfully, resting a cheek on 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 the backs of her fingers. We're a couple of broken young fools, aren't we? Come on, don't say that. Come graduation, we'll be back out in the real world. The real world? Sometimes I surprise myself with the way I think about things. I guess the strange divorced feeling of Yamaku and the surrounding town of compared to the outside world still hasn't become natural. Maybe you will never will. It's, it's strange, in hindsight, being isolated from society like this. Doesn't feel as bad as it probably would, should. A wry grin on her face, Lily seems to share the same sense of amusement at the idea. Eventually, though, her smile drops. I'll be going back to Scotland for a week or two soon. Is that why we had to reschedule Hanako's birthday party? She gives an affirmative nod. You'll be able to see your family again, at least. You're not looking forward to it? I haven't seen... I haven't met my family in six years. I don't even know how to act around them anymore. Wait, what? My mouth hangs open as I try to process what she said. If she's 18, then that means she'll have only been 12 when they left. I may have seen very little of my parents while with them both working long hours. But that's, I feel utterly useless struggle to find some way to respond. That's, but why? Why did they leave? Or why are they inviting me and Akira back? Both, I suppose. My father's business has its headquarters in Scotland. An executive position became available for him there. In the end, he had to move there permanently. My mother followed him, but Akira and I stayed in Japan for the sake of both Akira's job with the Japanese branch of my father's company, and my education. As for the latter, one of my aunts is gravely sick. Ah, I'm sorry. Don't be. It feels strange. Really, we're being summoned there for her, yet we barely met before. I can't even remember the sound of her voice. As equally strange as the total lack of an antipathy? She feels towards her family for doing such a thing. I can't help but feel slightly humble help feeling slightly humbled. That said, her wistful exterior is just hiding her emotions. Seeing her like this is depressing. Knowing what to do. I lift my myself off the bed. Lillian notices the bed's movements, her head perking up and her hand reaching sideways to feel where I was. He saw? I walk over to my bag and still leaning against the wall, un unbuckling the front flap and retrieving the opaque bag from within. I take the small plain box in my hands. Hold out your hands, Lily. She looks surprised for a moment but eventually acquiesces. I'm amused by her look of curiosity when I place the music box in her open palms. Her typically delicate way of holding it, making it seem as if it were fragile enough to break if breathed on. 
She wordlessly brings it to the front of her face and slender fingers, figuring out, feeling out its contours and patterning. Eventually, her fingers find the re re recessed line between the lid and the body of the box, and her thumb effortlessly pops open the lid. I take a seat on the bed next to her, watching her face, light, face silently and intently. She sits completely motionless as she listens to the diminutive, tiny melody, her mouth just slightly open. It takes a long while before she closes the lid with a small snap, bringing the curtain down on a miniature performance playing in her hands. The smile on her face is gentle and wistful. It shows that I made the right decision. Thinking, thinking of it as a going away present for your trip to Scotland. I will. A restless shuffle and can be heard from the front of us, sound of having woken Hanako. She climbs out of the blankets I put over her, looking befuddled and wiping the sleep from her eyes. I see you're finally up. Hmm, what? Hanako looks around the room with her eyes only half open. Her mind far from being awake as it, her body. Her dazed state makes me and Lily chuckle. As Lily gets off the bed and tends to Hanako, I take one last look around the room. I... I guess I'd better get going then. There'll, there'll be questions if I'm seen leaving the girls' dormitory in the morning. Goodbye, Hiso. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. I start to walk towards the door, picking up, up my somewhat lighter bag along the way. After I leave the room and enter the hallway, though, I hear Lily's footsteps behind me. Hmm? What's wrong? Without a word, she strides up to me. I freeze as I feel her hand slide under my cheek, seemingly every nerve taking in the feeling of her fingers palm upon it. Immediately after her face slowly moves next to mine, a light momentary touch of her lips pushing against my other cheek. For a moment, everything seems to stand still. I absentmindedly bring up my fingers to my cheek as to try to recapture that fleeting feeling. Lily? That's my thank you, he saw. Thank you? For your present, have a nice have a nice day in school. Bro, this song playing right now is so sweet, dude. Romance and Andante 2 is such a sweet song, dude. Every time I hear it, it fills me with such a like feeling of aww. Like a warm feeling, dude. I think it'd be hard pressed not to have a hard a nice day after that. <laughs> hard <laughs> I walk away with a certain spring to my step. I think there were some people around that glance emerging from the girl's dormitory building, but I find it difficult to care. He chan Go away. He chan Leave me alone. Come on, he chan oh, Let me sleep. After two nights of not being able to sleep at all, the last thing I want to be is woken, so I finally managed to. It may just be the last period of class with my textbook as my pillow, but I'll take whatever sleep I can get at this point. See, he chan even she chan wants you to get up. I don't care what she's in and wants. Leave me alone. Jeez, he chan I'll just have to wake. Wait, what's Misha gonna do? You, this is bad. I'm, a, I'm. <laughs> you don't have to. I feel my face. I feel my face flowering into a scarlet red blush. The students in, in class are still bolt upright, staring at the shouting fool who just sleeping just a moments ago. Damn it! I lift my head. I smack back down to the table with a noticeable thud. What? <laughs> Misha's trademark uncontrolled laughter reverberates through the classroom. As I turn my mournful eyes in the bes bespectacle of Shizune beside her, she carefully adjusts her glasses, desperately trying to maintain a look of serious disapproval. Narrowing my eyes, I see the badly hidden grin spread across her face. Et tu, Shizune. She, she looks away quickly as her she crosses her arms tightly, barely on the edge of her control. 
Misha's laughter doubles in volume as she glances at Shizuna. All I can do is drag my hand down to my face in resignation. You two. Who was the one who slept in class, Hee Chen? Yeah, yeah, it was me. Poor Shi Chen, having a fit trying to wake up you up, weren't you? I moved my eyes to the standoffish Shizune, who with a single huff to confirmation, returns looking away with her arms crossed. Why was Shizune trying to wake me up? Shi Chen wanted to give you the handouts the substitute teacher gave out while He Chen was sleeping. Handouts? I suddenly find two sheets m the paper thrust down in, in front of my face. Following the hand holding them, I see the still pouting face of figure looking down on me with distinct scowl. I guess I'm in the wrong here. Ah, uh, um, sorry about that. N no dice. Her irritated face ho still holds. I clasp my hands together and flick my head down towards an apology. Very, very sorry. She huffs and simply drops the papers on the desk. Damn. I look over my head and hands to see Shizune and Misha signing frantically to, to each other. A look of frustration on Shizune's face. It, it looks to be a loss of dialogue more than a tirade. Punctured with a sidelong glances to me, at me. To say it's unsettling is an understatement. Um, the two suddenly stop signing and look at me in unison. Both have ex exactly the same look of disapproval. In one fluid motion, Misha's hand suddenly extends high above me and becomes rocketing down. Before I can even hope to react, my head is sent bouncing up and down like a jack-in-the-box. I quickly bring my head, my hand on my head more reflex than actual pain. Ow, what was that for? I open my eyes to see the two grinning at each other while exchanging an enthusiastic warm thumbs up. Why did I say the warms up? She chan says she forgives you now, he chan could you forgive me with a little less force next time? I look at the two with a blank... Bah! I look at the two with a blank face. Misha and Shizune. One, Hisao, nil. Oh, she chan says that you should check your student mail more often. She produces a bright yellow on envelope and hands it over with an exuberant grin. By the way, no matter what path you play, you always get this letter. Always. You. She produced a bright yellow envelope and had an exuberant grin. Strange. Who could have written me a letter? N now's not the time, and most definitely not the place to find out, though. Giving up on the nap so cruelly strolling from me. I rub my forehead and slowly get up, putting the sheets and the envelope in my bag before swinging it over my shoulder. I take a step back and move it and depart with a small bow. Bow? Misha clutches her side, laughing, and Shizuna looks back in a curt farewell. I join the four students, exiting the open door and turn the corner in the hallway, only to end up facing to face with Hanako. Whoa, uh, hey Hanako. Good afternoon, Hisao. S Silence falls between us busily chatting and student passes us by. She's fidgeting constantly, her eyes drawn rather unmis unremarkable footwear. I take my the bridge off of my nose and my fingers while I blink my eyes heavily in an attempt to make things seem clearer. I'm barely staying awake as is. Hanako, you want something. What is it? Um, uh... Um, I wanted to give you this. Hmm? She holds out a small rectangular piece of paper. I blink again to make out the text. Then barely open eyes. Slowly starting to make out what's written. Eggs 2, bread loaf 1. Who writes a... Who writes loaf of bread like that? Whole grain cereal, thyme... A uh, shopping list? I look upwards, raising an eyebrow. I usually go shopping with Nelly, but I can't come, so... You want me to run errands for you? It, it, it's okay if you don't want to. I just thought that maybe, um... She's panicking. I sigh, yet another battle lost. 
though this time it's meant by weakly fraught surrender. I smiled tiredly and rest a hand on my head and on her on her on her head trying to calm her down. It's fine. It's fine. I was going to go anyway. Just just the stuff on the list. She nods and then bows deeply twice as if to make her gratitude perfectly clear. We're going to meet outside the school gates at 6. Thank you. I was going to get it, but I, but I need to study for the test tomorrow. Test? Ah, oh, that's right. Science. How are you doing with it? She brines her in ever so slightly. And with that, this is the t all the time that I have for this episode. But, but, but before I cut things off though i'd like to remind you guys to like the video comment something and share it also make sure to follow me on my socials you can find them in the description below and join the community discord i am where we are currently trying to reach 100 members in the server and if you want to if you want to get ask me about questions for content check my twitter page you can dm me on twitter or discord but make sure that you keep it appropriate that but that being said i'll see you guys in the next video peace